Hello, welcome to the Answers Overview video. My name is Ian Bommel, and I'll give you a quick walkthrough of InfoBip's chatbot building platform. It enables you to build, test, and deploy chatbots that provide timely and accurate reactions, i.e. answers, to your customers' questions, statements, or actions, hence the platform's name. Chatbots built on answers enable you to provide your customers with automated support and can be used for different sales and marketing use cases, engagement and entertainment, or to collect information while you can even create advanced virtual assistants. In this video, you'll get a glimpse of what the Answers platform can do, but there's so much more to explore, which you'll find out soon enough. So without further ado, let's dive right in. This is the Answers Canvas. It's a default workspace that you get to when you click on the new chatbot button, or when you edit an existing chatbot. In this case, we'll be working on a canvas of an existing chatbot called My First Chatbot. This was previously built on the WhatsApp channel. I'll use this chatbot to introduce some basic terms, and don't worry about memorizing them because all the terms and segments needed for the chatbot creation are represented by the panels right here. The more terms and segments you use, the more complex a chatbot you can build. In other words, if you want to create a more advanced version of a chatbot, you'll be using all of these panels. The first term that we'll cover is dialogues. No matter how intelligent a chatbot is, it always follows a specific set of rules. These rules, actions, and the conversation flow are set in this panel. You just need to drag and drop the elements to set up the conversation structure. On the right side of the dashboard is the build sidebar. It contains all the available building blocks for the dialogue structure, divided into three sections, bot sends, bot receives, and bot actions. When you drag over an element and click on it, you can complete the element's configuration on the panel to the right. Now we're moving on to the next panel, intents. Essentially, an intent is a goal behind the user input, or in other words, the reason why an end user is starting the conversation with the chatbot. On this panel, you can see all the intents created for this chatbot with an option to create or import new intents. Basically, you want to create different intents for specific customer queries to ensure that your chatbot learns to recognize them. It's pretty much like teaching a person. The more examples of a specific subject matter you provide, the better they understand it. The same goes when it comes to training artificially intelligent systems. If we want our chatbot to recognize the end user intent, there should be ideally 400 phrases per each intent. But if you don't have the resources to collect or write down that many phrases, you can go with a minimum of 50. Let me give you an example. If we want to train a bot to understand a welcome phrase in English, we will create at least 50, but ideally 400, phrases to teach it to recognize the intention. But don't get overwhelmed, because at InfoBip, we can help you obtain a sufficient amount of phrases for any intent or language. Let's move on to our next panel, Attributes. Attributes are like parameters filled with different values through which you can gain more information about the end user and their potential problems, wishes, or inquiries. It's your chatbot's short-term memory, so to speak. The values related to a user or the conversation are stored as long as the session is active. On this panel, you can see a list of all the attributes created for one chatbot, with an option to add more. In attributes, you can store all the user or conversation information, like username, location, email address, and etc., and use it for processing or communication such as addressing the user by name or routing the conversation based on the attribute content. Now let's talk about keywords. As the word itself suggests, keywords are crucial words that the bot uses to recognize how the dialogue should unfold. Through keywords, you can configure and branch the dialogue depending on the end user's queries or responses. In the Keywords panel, you can see all the keywords created for a specific chatbot, and once again, you can add more keywords. Each keyword has a list of synonyms, covering a range of related words that your customers might write instead of the original, more common keyword. For example, when instructed to write the number one in order to proceed to the next step, some users will write the number itself, some will write the number with a dot, and some will even spell out the number in letters. Synonyms matter because they help the chatbot to understand all of these variations of the same user input. Now let's move on to the settings panel, which is pretty straightforward, so we don't have to go into too many small details. 
It basically gives you an overview of the chatbot with the possibility to define and configure some general bot parameters, such as the chatbot name, the description, the channel, and other similar features. Now that we've covered all the steps that you need to take to create a chatbot, we're ready to go to the simulator panel. This is where your new chatbot comes to life in a controlled environment, so you can make some tweaks before sending it off to the real world. You can test your chatbot at any stage of the process to make sure that you've covered as many customer interaction scenarios as possible. Let's quickly summarize what we've covered in this video. The Dialogues tab is an empty canvas where you can create the conversational flow and set up your chatbot structure. You can create it by simply dragging and dropping the available elements. The data received back from end users are classified as intents, attributes, or keywords, and all of them can be reviewed and edited in their dedicated panels. You use intents and keywords to route conversations, while attributes represent your chatbot's short-term memory that can take the whole user experience to the next level. Finally, after your bot has been active for some time, you will probably want to see how successful it's been. That's where analytics comes in. It gives you insights into bot performance and a range of statistical data, including session analytics, conversational analytics, and user analytics. Check out the Answers free trial offers to get a better grasp of what the platform can do, because at this point, we've only scratched the surface. Thanks again for watching.